Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. It looks like I am having troubles. Let's go over that. That doesn't look very good. Uh, tell us what series exam you're taking and where you're joining us from. I'm coming to you from my studio here in uh, fabulous Las Vegas. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> just, I just finished a tutoring session, and uh, Jerry was kind enough to let me uh, share that with you. So uh, I will be putting that as a replay. And we did uh, went over covered calls and protective puts, and then we did a, a Kaplan uh, question on the QBank. So uh, that will be available here uh, shortly. Uh, tell us what series exam you're taking and uh, where you're joining us from. If you do have a question, uh, please put it, uh, what exam you're taking, SIE or Series 7, for example, you know, Series 24, with a capital Q followed by your question. That way, I can pick it out of the chat and, you know, I can distinguish from people who are just chatting together uh, with victorious test takers or whatever uh, for your question. Uh, remember, now we're in a new format on the 65. You only need a 70% to pass. Uh, we have podcasts available. This is available weekly as a podcast. So if you don't want to uh, join us on the YouTube channel, you can uh, listen to this in your car uh, on uh, Spotify. Uh, Thursday, I'm doing an advanced options strategy class. It's uh, $60. You can register at deantennytutoring.setmore.com. Uh, it's 4.30, and we'll be going over straddles and spreads. Uh, discount codes is 10% for Kaplan's Guru 10. For uh, Test Geek, it's uh, Guru 20. I'm teaching a Series 9 this Thursday. I'm teaching a 10. This is my second quarter calendar. You can just you know ask me, but that's what's going on. And uh, that's my... Q3 schedule. Uh, the drawing tonight will be for a free admission to that class of Thursday. And then we also have a free live stream to after tonight. You'll be redirected to the live stream from last week. You can see what that's like. And if you want to join us for the next live stream, which would be the following Tuesday, uh, you can register for that as well. Okay. I think that takes care of our housekeeping. So let's see what you guys got in mind here in terms of comments. It looks like my wingman is missing in action. He's a big hockey fan, so that might be you know, where, where my friend Brian is. Um, Jennifer, wow, that hurts. I know that hurts. 64. Well, you might be trying a little bit too hard on that. I, you changed no answers. I'm not freaking out. Uh, maybe we need to get you another QBank, Jennifer. I don't know if you're using Kaplan or Past Perfect or STC, but Jennifer, maybe we need to supplement uh, with a new QBank. I don't know if you joined me from a, for a 24 class. Uh, I am doing a two-day Kaplan 24 class. I think it's next week, and you can join me there. That might be something I would recommend. I would strike while the iron is high. Give yourself, uh, let yourself refresh and reset, Jennifer. Uh, but yeah, I think you should be aggressive in going back into the cave to slay the dragon. So um, I don't know. It's up to you. You know, if you feel like you're tired and you need to refresh and reset, you know, usually 24s, there's not a threat of losing your, your gig. You know, <laughs> so... Um, if you can, you know, attack it in a way that you feel a little less uh, intimidated, I guess, or frantic or anxious about it, then I would suggest you, you take that break. If that break works for you, uh, that's what I should do. That's what I would recommend. Let's see. New York City, Big Apple. Woo! Yeah, so study materials, like I say, I'm, you know, I don't think you should be monogamous. Uh, I, I believe in supplements, and I think any resource that you have available, obviously, I think the best free supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. Uh, but, you know, uh, if you can supplement with a Test Geek or a supplement with a Kaplan QBank, or if you have a QBank, Kaplan QBank, STC, or, or Past Perfect, I'm a big, big believer in that. Um, I don't think it's a, a time to be frugal with resources that you have. I get, I get them. Some people don't have the resources. You know, the only option they have is my free, you know, study materials or other free YouTube content. I get it. But if you have the resources, uh, I would certainly uh, spend them. You know, it's an investment in yourself. So uh, make sure you get whatever you think is helpful and can ma make you cross the finish line, right? Uh, 65, all right. STC and Kaplan, there you go. So, you know, maybe we got to head past perfect to the mix. Well, Jason, you should be getting a good night's rest. I'm a little worried that you're joining us. We appreciate it. We're going to be sending you good test vibes tomorrow. But the biggest thing tonight is to get some rest because your reading skills are very important. And I don't know about you, but well, boy, when I'm uh, 
uh, reading skills are diminished. Uh, there is my uh, wingman. <laughs> hey, Brian, what's up? Sorry for being late. No, no. I told him you might be sitting, uh, what do you call it? Is it courtside for hockey games or ice side? What do they call it when you're sitting? Or something like that. No, yeah. not the hockey game tonight. No. Uh, yeah, well, Vegas. I thought Vegas is playing tonight. I thought they, are. Is- they are. They are. They okay. are. So, okay. But you're just a Kraken fan. If it ain't the Kraken, then it ain't for no, you. No, 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 no. We have like, a <laughs> split, uh, split rivalry. And- <laughs> Anyways, Jason's taking the test tomorrow. And I was telling him he needs to get some sleep. Uh, I don't know about you, Jason, but when I'm tired, my reading skills are diminished. So, Absolutely. Series 7, Milwaukee, 69 first attempt. Well, Emmett, you should be able to find some points. So that's good news. I mean, it's bad news you didn't pass the first time. That's always the goal. But if you get that high 60, it's depressing, but at least it's a sign that you uh, didn't have a knowledge deficit. You had a base. Uh, was enough base. We can get it above par, which we need to do, but, you know, it was close. That's why most firms, by the way, the reason most firms will give you a second attempt if you're over 60 and not below 60 is because below 60 is knowledge deficit. 60 plus, I don't know if Brian would agree with me, but I don't think that's knowledge deficit. It's some other variable, you know, changing answers. Who knows? Family emergency, you know. A lot of that in there. You're right. Absolutely. Um, Taking the SIE, failed the first attempt. Struggled the first two sections of the outline the most. Um, I'm trying to remember, what is that? Knowledge of capital markets, I think, is the first That's one. right. That's number one. And, yeah. and what's the second one? Do you know, Brian, off the top of your head? Products. Pro- yeah. Well, products, man. Yeah. You know, that's where I would go if I were to with you. I, listen, we want to bring all sections above par, but particularly products and the risk. That's 33 questions. And so I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll link to my video on that, that section of the exam uh, for those people at 658. I'll link to my little video about that section of the exam on the SIE. SIE products. Okay. I'm using Kaplan AD Banker. Well, um, I'm glad you're using Kaplan <laughs> because I, I, you know, I think if you only had AD Banker, you could be at risk. So I'm glad you're supplementing with Kaplan. 66, Dave, is, uh, you know, it's a challenge for people on that 66. There's a lot of folks that struggle with it. And so hopefully you can find those points. So we can find those points. Oscar, one of my favorite people. Right on, Long Island, New York. You finally got the recorded classes. I'm glad to hear that, Oscar. If you join me for a Kaplan class, the Kaplan classes are recorded and you get access to them after the class. In this last 66 class I taught with Kaplan, uh, Oscar joined me and he was really helped me as a good class admin kind of guy, you know, as well as contributing to the discussion. Uh, but anyways, they were, for some reason, Brian, they were, had a video of another instructor, which who knows, maybe that's a good thing, bad thing, but I think they got it squared away now. So that's good news. Yeah. <laughs> Atlanta. All right. All right. So Emma, your question from the uh, chat is if you don't mind asking, remember in chat, you, you're not, you're not cloaked. So, you know, if you don't want to put your private business out there, I get it. But if you, I can't tell you how many times, Brian, on the channel or in our Reddit community, somebody will say, I've been lurking and I've been cloaked and now I'm deciding to uncloak. <laughs> you know? um, I, I kind of like our Reddit communities because you can remain anonymous, uh, which I think is helpful to the discussion because you don't have to be fearful of your firm is watching or, or anything like that. Uh, my, my point was going to be, I wish more people, though, Brian, would uncloak and get active. Because I just hate it when that when they're uncloaking and say I was a lurker, but it's after they've missed their mark. And I wish they would be a little more proactive about joining the community or being involved in the community of fellow test takers, uh, you know, on the front end of that uh, rather than on the back end of that. We're all in it together. That's exactly right. Taking the SIE this Thursday, averaging a 70 on Kaplan, but scores rising every time. Just rinse and repeat, I man. Stay like the course. It. I like it. Stay the course. I mean, you know, Kaplan's a little tougher, so I like it. Have you done the uh, FINRA SIE exam yet? Exactly. Yeah, FINRA, uh, Austro, Austrolib 11. Is that an Aust- Are you a, a fan of the Austrian School of Economics? I am. Uh, Ludwig van Mises and Hayek and those kind of people. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe it has nothing to do with Austrian, you know, Austrian liberal economy, like an economist. Anyways, uh, back to the point at hand. If you haven't taken the FINRA SIE practice test, I highly recommend that. You can also, just to diversify, you could also take uh, another test. You, you know, you don't have much time. You don't want to be doing too much work. But Brian has a test geek practice exam on our channel that he allows you to take a look at. 
Uh, we have not been SIE, so we have lots of SIE. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll link at 10.07 to our SIE uh, practice test playlist. We have a whole playlist of practice tests for the SIE. SIE playlist for practice exams. Okay. Two to 66 and got a 68. Ugh. How many times, Dean? God, I wish I had a dollar for every 68 I've seen on the series. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's weird, isn't it? It, it doesn't seem like it's coincidental. I know it is, but, you know, it just seems like it's not. Okay, so, uh, Trina, uh, I know you're a hard worker, so I would take, a, I'll link to my, you know, I don't know if you watched it already. I have a video, you failed, is it over? Uh, spoiler alert, it's not. Uh, but um, what you know, five steps you should take when you uh, suffer that uh, misfortune and how to correct it. But I would tell you, while the hurt is fresh, so anybody who's just missed their mark recently, while the hurt is fresh, I want you to do a debrief with yourself. I want you to go to the, either the FINRA or NASA website, depending on what test it is, print out either the FINRA content outline or NASA test specifications. Yes. And what I want to do while the hurt is fresh is I want you to go through there and do an intellectual inventory. What I want you to do is plus, zero, minus in terms of the uh, content. You go through it, and you, plus means above par, I felt like I passed this sec this content here. Zero is par. We want to make sure we get above par. And the minus would be below par, things you need to work on. And I can't stress this enough to make sure for those of you who have not missed the mark first time. So good news, Trina. You're going to have to pass two tests. Your reattempt on your 66 and more importantly, a test of resiliency. And Trina, in our business, I would want you to know that people who have passed those tests are very successful. Because what they demonstrate is they're not fragile. You know, some people, when they miss the mark the first time, they're like, oh, my God, it's life is over. And, you know, people respond and they get it done. They do well in the business. Now, for those of you who have not missed your mark, we, we don't want to have a test of resiliency if we don't need one, <laughs> if we want you to pass the first time. But that's why it's so important that you overlearn the content, that you overlearn it so everything is above par, so that if you get one of these face of death draws, you know, Brian and I are wishing for you the dream draw. Everything you studied shows up. You go, man, I don't know what the big deal was. That's where we're hoping for you. But you got to be able to hit down even a face of death draw. You know, the draws are coincidental as well. But Struggling with laws and regulations. Well, Emmy, uh, in the right-hand screen there, you see the Test Geek himself, our always very special guest, uh, managing member of Test Geek Exam Prep LLC. And uh, we don't run our live stream as a commercial for Brian and his content. But uh, I think Brian does as good a job as any uh, person out there in terms of putting laws and regulations into plain English. And so uh, you can get his paid supplement with our 20% discount. If you just want the PDF, it's like 40 bucks. And he has this great little cheat sheet that helps you with that, as well as a practice final that's excellent. If you want his entire 66 video course, Emmy, with a discount, it's about 100 bucks. But if you're struggling with laws and regulations, by the way, Kaplan is sufficient, STC is sufficient, past perfect is sufficient, but I'm a big believer in supplementing your paid study materials with either free supplements like my channel or a paid supplement like uh, Brian. And so I would recommend that. Um, we also have a 66 playlist on laws and regulations. Uh, I call it the Mighty 90. I don't know if you watched that, but I'll put that there for you, Emmy. At 1351 on the replay, I will link the Mighty 90. That is the all of that in 90 minutes. Actually, I teach that as a four-hour class. I mean, what I did is try and do it in 90 minutes. And uh, watch that. See what you think. That's free. And then you can decide maybe if you want to supplement with uh, with Brian. Brian, you got any comments on that besides? You know what? Yeah. I'm thinking, and this might not be the place to voice this. You know yeah. how you do your special classes. Right. Yeah. What if I did one on registration of persons? There you go. I love it. I love it. Do you, now, can you do that? If not, you're welcome to borrow my platform to do it. Well, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, okay. I'll be down in Vegas uh, on Thursday afternoon. Let's grab that, a, yeah, a that would be. I get so many requests for that. Wow. So, Emmy, keep an eye on the channel. Maybe we'll uh, we'll do a – I do the – like Thursday evening, I'm doing an advanced option. I've had so many requests for something on NASA exams. So, boy, that will be great. Uh, I, I'm excited. I'm, I, just came yeah. Through. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, okay. Well, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, Kaplan, upper 60s, lower 70s. Knew it would be tight. 
testing mid seventies, lower eighties. Now that's where you need to be, Emmett. So, you know, I call it the margin of safety, and to have a margin of safety, you should be in the mid seventies. Uh, Seventy plus, we we bet that you're going to pass. We think you're going to pass, but uh, the higher, the better in terms of that margin of safety. Uh, upper sixties, we have many people who pass in the lower sixties, but sixties and seventy, I consider you to be at risk. Below sixty means I think you don't have enough knowledge base to to, to get it done. Your your theory on scores, I think we're pretty similar on what we think about scores. Absolutely, yeah. I I like mid seventies. I tell okay. people, you know, I'd like I like mid seventies. That gives you an over ninety percent chance of passing. Yeah, I mean, we'd be you know we very rarely, but we are shocked sometimes. Sometimes people get scores that where that happens a lot of times, and that's why I'm glad you're using Kaplan uh, and supplementing it. You're not monogamous. I like that. Because sometimes what happens is people get scores, but it's because they've memorized the question and the answers. And that's not helpful, right? We want to be able to know that you actually know the content when you see it. And STC's QBank is just a little, not, not as deep as Kaplan's QBank. Not as deep. Right on. Successful test taker in the house, Jacqueline. Uh, my pleasure. I am uh, very gratified when, uh, you know, we contribute. Uh, Brian, I had somebody on the channel. I say we, the collective we, because they said on the channel today, uh, hey, Brian, Dean, thank you so much. And I said, we are gratified when we contribute to testing victories like yours. So I uh, gave him some gratitude on your behalf as well. So no, that's great. That's great. Taking average score 76, you should, why would you be doomed, Tekas? Why would you be doomed? <laughs> Listen, you should, you, even if you, you don't, you got to fake it till you make it. You got to be positive. So no, wow. you're not doomed. That's actually a good score. I would be if I were a betting man. I'd say you're going to pass. So I would too. I, I'd put twenty bucks on it. Yeah. You know, Brian, I was teaching a three day sixty six class. Oscar was in there, and uh, is uh, Oscar, as you recall, every kept on chat. I say, you know, demonstrate your prowess or lack thereof, and trying to tempt this question, and knowing that you know, again, you're revealing yourself in the chat. But anyways, people would get the right answers, and they put they would put a question mark next to their right answer. So finally, I said, listen, I'm not accepting any answers with question marks. <laughs> with question Moving mark. forward, put an exclamation point. I'll know you mean question mark, but your exclamation point would be better psyche wise. That's and so, right. you know, you got to have some confidence. Got to have some confidence. You don't need to get, I don't beat yourself up. 76 is a great score. It really so, is. Yeah. So when are you testing again? Testing Thursday. You should be okay. So uh, don't beat yourself up. It's more important that you have confidence and you're well rested. You should have every reason to be confident with that score. So, uh, yeah, I, I think Emmett, they'll be safe for sure. I, I guess you'll reset. Now, when you say, Clyde, you didn't do well, you don't have to put it out there. But I think if it was below 60, I think that's knowledge deficit. And I suggest, Brian, that people just pretend they never tested and start over with yeah. a new study plan because what you did did not work. So that's what I would say, you know in terms of uh, of that. Below 60 is a knowledge deficit problem. At that point, you got to redo everything you, you did. Uh, no, nobody's seen the differences. I think everybody, Dave, is, uh, you know, somebody I thought spent a lot of time and energy on a, a video that I think is a waste of time on digital assets because it, the questions aren't going to be about digital assets. It's going to be digital assets and whether or not you're buying an unregistered security, for example. Hard to believe, Brian. I love this. I'm going to clip it and put it on the channel. But Taylor Swift, can you believe this? Taylor Swift was being offered a cryptocurrency investment opportunity. And guess what her due diligence question? Man, talk about a smart young lady. Yeah. Can you assure me that I'm not buying an unregistered security? Did she really? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo. She's much higher on my... Uh, my Woo. And... Uh, so those are the kind of questions that when they do show up, you will be expecting to see. But Dave, we've had many people uh, going to the breach uh, si since yesterday, and I've heard back. No new stuff. Uh, recently, just before we went live, the person told me, no surprise, successor firm. Remember the successor firm? And do you have to pay your fees? That was there. It's always been there. So uh, these changes are not going to be material. They're not. And so far, to answer your original question, nobody has reported back to me. That they've seen it, by the way, and I'm in very close contact with the subject matter expert at Kaplan, Chuck Lowenstein. He's in charge of NASA. Him and I are always talking. And at Kaplan, one of the great things about Kaplan and my relationship with Kaplan is it's not just test takers from the channel. We literally have hundreds of people testing. And so that means we get more feedback. So if anybody's going to hear, you know, it'll be us. 
was it you, Brian? I think Brian says he wants to hear things twice before he believes it. So <laughs> I, 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 I like confirmation. I'm going to send you a copy, uh, Dave, of, of Chuck's uh, letter to me, the uh, email. But I love it, Brian. He was saying that we know that our, our students sometimes don't pay attention. <laughs> and so even though these are the things we're looking for, we're going to get all kinds of people going, well, you said this and, you know, so. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, That's like on Friday. I had questions on RRs and sales sponsored sales contests. Well, uh, you know, FINRA frowns on sales contests, but disclosure is the rule there, right? So I say, hey, Billy, I was a top producer in this mutual fund last year. They had a contest and I won a trip to Tahiti. This year, the contest is uh, a trip to Paris. I hope to win, but it's not about the trip to Paris. It's about you accomplishing your financial goals. And it shouldn't be a particular product. And then remember, this ties into the gift or gratuity rule, the gift maximum gift or gratuity that an employee of one firm can give the employee of another firm is $100. So what is permitted? Sales costs are permitted, but they can't be a particular product and they have to be disclosed. I think at some point they will be not permitted. Uh, but in the good old days are bad old days. I, mean, I think the important part of that, Dean, is that it can't be a particular product. Right. It's got to be, in general, your production or, you know, something like that. But when, uh, we, when I was working at the broker dealer, we had contests every yeah, week. Yeah. I remember I literally wholesalers. Volume. It wasn't about a particular product. Yeah. Yeah. I remember wholesalers would come in and they'd put like a, you know, TV on the, the, the table and say, okay, the next guy who writes a ticket in this. Takes home the television. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, non deductible. So, uh, when non deductible, I'm not sure in the context, Billy, but non deductible, the, the wholesalers can entertain. So, you remember, if you're a baby broker, Billy, that's not a derogatory term. It's a term of endearment. But as a baby broker, I say, Billy, why don't you look at our approved product list? These are all the different things you can get people involved in. And I highly recommend that you contact the wholesaler, let's say it's Franklin Templeton Fund Distributors, Finn Remember Firm. And uh, I'm the wholesaler, I come out and say, hey, Billy, why don't you invite your prospects and clients to dinner this evening? And uh, I'll pay for the pizza and the sodas and I'll talk to them about professional management, diversification and ease of ownership. Now that is a deductible business activity and that makes it okay. It means I'm not going to run afoul of the gift or gratuity rule, right? Because hosting a dinner, is a normal deductible business activity. Now I say, hey, Billy, why don't I take you to, oh, I don't know. I don't want to get on toward here on the live stream, but uh, <laughs> take you a place and, uh, you know, take care of you in a way that's not deductible. That would be a problem. And that would be a problem. I like it. I, you know, there's a, 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 a direct correlation, Emmett, between QBank usage and passing. We're not suggesting you memorize the QBank, but you know, when people don't pass, so if I were your real accountability partner, I just finished a great session with Jerry and I told you, Jerry has given us permission to put it up. So it'll be up here shortly. And we did a, a little over an hour on covered calls and protective uh, puts. And I, I teased him. I said, I'm your fake accountability partner because you're paying me, you know, $225 an hour. So, you know, I'm not somebody who's going to hire, hire you or fire you. But if I were your real accountability partner, and you don't pass, the first thing I do is use my big brother key at Kaplan to see what your QBank usage was. And almost always, people who don't pass haven't done enough questions. So I don't know where that line is. I'm not telling you to learn by doing practice questions. You need to learn, read the book. You need to watch the videos. You need to do all those things. But there's a direct correlation between QBank usage and passing. So if it's the seven Emmett, that's like 3,400 questions, and you divide, and that's how many questions you got to do each day. What do you think, Brian, about uh, QBank usage in general? Uh, you and I have had this conversation before. I, are you on the same page? I think you're not on the same page with me on I'm this one. Not. Okay, well, there you go. So what is your theory on QBank usage? I think QBanks from all test providers um, are a bit in the weeds on a lot of those and can be extremely discouraging to many people. I think that some of that content that's not testable in those Q banks can actually push out some of the necessary material that we do need for the test. But where that line is, Dean, see, that's the problem. Is it 1,700 questions? Is it 2,000? You know, I don't know where that line is where it gets too much. I think 3,400 are too many. Okay, so I think that's a very good indictment 
Uh, and as proof of that, if you choose to be redirected to the live stream tonight, somebody had an option question that they wanted me to work with them in the live stream session from Past Perfect. My God, Brian, you are so correct. This thing should have been a churning question. They wow. they bought the stock, then they you know sold a call, then they bought a put, and then they exercised the calls, and the puts expired. <laughs> oh my Jeez. God! You know, so, um, I have to agree that there are, there are people who get put at risk. I I don't think it's as much Kaplan as for other test prep vendors, but Kaplan's guilty too. I do see questions where uh, the other thing I think, even when the questions are good, maybe that the question at the end isn't what I would want. So for example, in Jerry's session tonight, we did a Kaplan question where they shorted the stock and wrote the put. And the question was, what was the max gain? Which in the test, the answer question is, what's the max loss, which is unlimited. So that's the other thing I don't like is sometimes the flavor is different, even though the question itself is legit, the, the twist on it is not, you know, on the broad avenues and highways. Two things, Emmett, I've been trying to get Brian to do more QBank uh, questions, performance oh, opportunities. Yeah. He's yeah. working on that. But in the meantime, he does have his test geek practice exams where there is none of that. Brian doesn't put up a practice question on an exam unless he thinks it's, you know, test something you might encounter. Right. So, all right. So there we found the test geek and the guru disagree about QBank. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> uh, sure. Sure, Cynthia. Uh, I sent you invite uh, to Thursday, Cynthia, because you get that class free because you bought the first two. So. Uh, check your emails. You uh, have an invitation to the Thursday class. This is 2645 accretion. I will link that for you in the replay. Cynthia, have we talked about that particular concept? You know, Cynthia and I have talked a couple of times. Do you want to do something on our whiteboard? Or you have to. Oh, no, to... not right now because it's going okay, okay. to take too much time. But I think I have okay. an illustration. I don't know. Dean probably okay. won't too. Okay. But, you know, you're free to call me too as well. If you like. there, there you go. So let's see. Here's Brian's contact, contact, contact information. Let me get that for you. Yeah. Um, you know, Brian, listen, I had to get, I, I tell you this all the time, Brian, but I, I have people who literally will send me things and say, Brian is wrong on test geek. Sometimes it's me. It's my content. I'm wrong. Part of me goes, well, we've only been doing this 30 years. So maybe you're right. That exactly. We've, we've messed up. Uh, but I always tell people when they're not happy with, with my, you know, answer on Brian's behalf, I say, please just reach out to Brian. He has more than, he's more than happy to talk to you about his content. And I say, it's not my job to defend his answer. His answer is correct. But if you don't like Dean telling you it, why, call Brian. Call Should Brian. we talk about the exercising index option? Yeah, yeah, he's got a question that comes up all the time. It's the same questions, by the way. That's right. Every time. So yeah. you know, I'm always expecting, I go, here we go again. Yeah. You know, usually I just cut and paste the last time I answered for somebody. <laughs> so that's how you get a little Brian. And uh, like I say, uh, reach out. You know, he's a lonely guy. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, in the back, where are we at? Rachel, I think you just passed, right? I think Rachel's a victorious test taker, so right on, right on. So you want to talk to a... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so maybe I had it right, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, uh... <laughs> human action is one of my favorite economics to Tomes. Okay, let's see, where are we at here? We're at Trina... Passed the SE last week. I'm, I'm sorry. I get it. If I miss you, don't take it personal. Sometimes what happens is I leave to go to a banner and I come back. I sometimes lose my spot in the chat. And let's see. Took the SIE. I think we did it Friday. I had a question. We did that one. We did that. Oh, that's where we went off on that little distinction. There we go. Back on track. Okay. Schedule started July. I'm using Pass Perfect. Want some tips on where the double down on a passing score. Um, you have any thoughts, Brian? 66. I usually tell Daniel people either struggle with one half or the other of that exam. So what's your thoughts, Brian? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, as we see, as we find, uh, folks who don't make the mark the first time about eight out of 10 times, it's the investment vehicle section. That is where they score the lowest. It's, it's really counterintuitive because a lot of people have anxiety, struggle, spend a lot of time on laws and regs and all that gobbledygook and language and vocabulary and typically score highest in that area and score lowest on investment vehicles. That's it's surprising too, because, you know, I think yeah. a little bit of hubris plays into that because they have their seven 
And I think they go into with a little bit of hubris. Oh, I've got my seven. And you know, what can they ask me about this? And there's some, there's some things that weren't on your seven. And they are a lot of mutual fund questions, for example. And I think people sometimes, you know, like I say, they drop the ball on it. So I agree with Brian that it's usually that investment section. Uh, Hazley, it has been asked earlier, but that's okay. The feedback is it's the same exam. Nobody has seen any of the new questions on any of the new content yet. Uh, my theory and Brian, and I did a whole podcast episode. I will link to, uh, he, we did one together on the 65. Uh, we did one, I did one separately on the 66. And we both said in there that NASA is notoriously slow on updating exams. Even when they tell you we're updating, it takes months. And then they have to test them for validity. So I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see anything for four or five months. And then I think we'll see some uh, coming in based on experimental questions. And we'll certainly report those out to you. Uh, I told you that at Kaplan, if you're using Kaplan, check your dashboard. Because Chuck will keep uh, posting there based on current stuff. So check in back on the live stream. Check your dashboard. I'm sure STC, I'm sure Past Perfect have their version of Chuck who... Well, you know, do the, uh, what are they called? Addendums? Am I saying that correctly? Addendum. Right. So. There you go. That's what I love about our Tuesday nights. People in a similar situation, right? So a lot of you are doing similar situations. So. Ugh. Ugh. Four questions. Was that today? Because the score uh, now is 70%. Ugh. That hurts. Ooh, that hurts. That hurts. Ouch. Minnesota. Minnesota people are so nice. They have that little rhythm to their voice. And I get in so many car accidents, Billy, in Minnesota because nobody wants to take the right way. <laughs> I figured, you know, which way it's going. That's that's kind of funny. <laughs> and then, and then, boy, it gets cold. I don't teach uh, 65 open enrollment classes for Kaplan anymore. I only do the 66, unfortunately. Uh, so the answer is no. But if you join us earlier, Brian and I are talking about putting something up. Uh, what would what'd you say you might want to do? Registration as a person? Definition of persons. Ooh, so registration. Uh, on the channel, everything on the channel is free. But at deantennytutoring.setmore.com, that's how you book tutoring. But there are classes there, and some of the stuff up there is free. Uh, there's free office hours if you purchased a class. The live stream overtime is there, and that's free. And there's paid classes. They vary from 30 to 40 to 50 uh, bucks. Uh, the Thursday night advanced option class is $60. So pay attention uh, uh, there. Brian and I, he's coming back out to Vegas. Are you here already or are you coming? No, uh, Thursday. Thursday. I'll be Thursday. Here. And we'll get together and we'll put something up and uh, decide what Brian's going to talk about and what he wants to charge. And, uh, you know, I, I make them available as free replays afterwards. And maybe Brian will do that on his channel or give me permission like to do both. So. I like that too. Yep. Okay. So there we go. So if you missed that, uh, check out replays and maybe you'll be able to get a replay on it. Um, that's the SIE last month, took a few weeks off and getting ready to study for the series seven. What should my scores and quizzes and exams feel confident? Well, we said it's over 80 is better, better margin of safety, but I think 70 mid seventies is okay. What do you think, Brian? That's it. There you go. Everybody who shoots for those eighties. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Woohoo. Right on Rachel. Right on. You know, nice job. You know, it's always it's always cool when people make their mark and you know, when they should, because they execute a dedicated discipline and organized study plan. And when they do so and they get that P, as Brian calls it, I mean, that's just what, what that's what they deserve. Right. So, Rachel, you deserve that. So I'm so happy for you. Woo. <laughs> Brittany, we'll be careful. You're testing on Friday. You took past perfect Kaplan and Fenra. Should you be taking more tests? I don't know. What were your scores, Brittany? That's what I'd want to know. Yeah. Um, this is and what again, you got yeah. mine on beans, right? You got my practice final on yeah. beans. Yeah. Uh, you got, yeah. You got mine. I do. I do a doppelganger uh, FINRA exam I wrote. So it's the same content that FINRA's exam has, but opposite answers. So I have the same answer sets by flip them on you. Then you got Brian's there and you got Notman. So I think with Tuesday and you're testing Friday, I think you can knock out Brittany a couple more. I'd like to know what those scores are, yeah. but this is uh Tuesday night. So Wednesday, maybe do uh Brian's uh, on the channel. We have Brian's. Uh, maybe uh, see what that score is. And then uh, maybe that's what, Wednesday? Thursday, I think you, depending on your scores, Thursday, you can either do it or not. You don't want to wreck your confidence. So it depends what your confidence level is. If your confidence level is well, go for it. But 
if not, shut down your study plan on Thursday afternoon, get some sleep, relax. I don't know, whatever you like to do to relax. I like to smoke a cigar, drink a scotch, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, relaxes, uh, wine, whatever, and put on your game face, so to speak. Yeah, Rachel deserves that pee, man. Uh, I'm not a fan of exam FX. Um, I really believe you should have a supplement, whether it's a free supplement, my channel, or a paid supplement like Brian or a Kaplan Q Bank. I really think you should to consider uh, adding to that uh, as your primary study source. Your thoughts, Brian? Yeah. Uh, how can I say this nicely? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the same thing, Jason. We're trying to be nice. Yeah. Here's about as nice as I could say it. I think that for some people, if all you have is an MFX, you could be at risk. Yeah, that's a, that's a great way of saying it. Yeah. I mean, a past the SIE seven, two and a half months with Kaplan, Dean, and Ken Finn. And Ken Finn is a capital advantage. Yeah, we're all we all trying to help you make your mark. So as I said, you know, I don't have any expectation that Brian people are monogamous and they just use Brian and not Dean or Dean and not Brian or I always Ken and not Dean or Dean and not Ken. <laughs> so, Brian and Dean, <laughs> Dean and Ken, and Brian and hey, teacher, Jimmy. Uh, I think and, every arrow in your quiver, every arrow in your quiver is what you should use to make your mark, right? So, you know, it's a, what's ever available to you and works. As I say, all that together, I mean, I call all that the buffet. That's you know, it's all a buffet and, you know, take what you like from the buffet. If you don't like it, don't put it on your tray. There you go. There you go. Hurts. That certainly hurts. You will know your results next week. I'm not sure why you would know your results next week. Are you testing from overseas or something? <laughs> Yeah, we disagree. Hey, kudos, by the way. So remember, in your 66, I think, Vassal, you won the, as I remember, the draw, and the test date didn't work out. So I think I still owe you the 30-minute coaching call. I don't usually give permission for this, so just be careful. I don't want people to think it's a flowing, floating contingent liability I have to people. But I did tell Vassal that I would honor the coaching call for 30 minutes out of 66 uh, when he decides he wants to do that. Anyways, uh, I say 20, give or take. Brian thinks less than that, and it is a function of the draw. So 30 is a lot. 30 is a lot. Yeah, I, wish I'd get, I wish I'd get that. Many. Well, there you I go. I do, too. Yeah. If, you, if you can turn options into a strength, yeah. you know, then you're going to wish for 125 option questions. <laughs> you know, I believe in con knowing the contract specifications. I told him I'm putting up that replay vassal uh, from Jerry. Jerry. Jerry and I just finished a tutoring session literally minutes before we started the live stream. And uh, he did give me permission to, to share that with you. And uh, once he got the T, he could track the money and he could do the contract specifications. Uh, yeah. He was yeah. off to the races. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. Not only is it left out, it actually, you know, I struggle when I'm teaching the economics because they really just have a very plain vanilla, I think, simple uh, economics discussion. So I fight uh, myself, say, well, it's not really... My my favorite thing about economics is I say, if anybody ever asks you about economics, investments or finance, and you want to sound smart, you should say it has a lot to do with interest rates. <laughs> and if they say, what about them? You say they fluctuate. They say, if there's good news or bad news, you say, it depends. And you tell me more. Now, for those of you who are maybe not into Austrian economics, like uh, Dean <laughs> and AustroLib11, a big part of that is uh, creative destruction, right? They, it's a good thing that, you know, the economy has a dynamic, is dynamic, right? It's a good thing that we make automobiles instead of buggy whips now. But, you know, there's people with different theories. But then I always say theory isn't truth, just a way of explaining things. The more theory can explain, the better that theory is. Uh, Jason, so here you go. Rachel, our victorious test taker in the house. This is why I love Rachel. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I love when our victorious test takers uh, join us on Tuesday because that means you don't have to take Dean and Brian's word for it. They can tell you what they experienced in terms of, uh, you know, slaying their Series 7 dragon. So she listened to all the lectures and were rough to get through. It did most chapter quizzes as well as three of their finals. And she liked Kaplan better. Well, there we go. And I'm glad she had that supplement. As I said, Jason, I'm glad she did that. Yeah, I think so, John. Past Perfect's tougher. So, tough. you know, I totally agree with Brian's comment, particularly on Past Perfect. I, I don't know if you've been here from the beginning, but Brian went on a little bit of a rant in a good way. 
about does he agree with Dean about QBank usage? And remember what he had said, and this is where I totally agree with him, and even more so on Pass Perfect, is that sometimes the test prep vendors can take you down a rabbit hole on something that not only is not testable, but fills up your brain with stuff you don't need. And to the detriment of the stuff you do need won't fit in there. I think Pass Perfect is the most guilty party of that. And so good news if you're getting in the mid-70s, that's great because it'll be easier. It's harder than the test. But that's not good for people who can't get past the 70 mark, right? They can, you can get stuck in past perfect and never get out of the mud. Uh, your thoughts, Brian, do you agree that past I, perfect is the most guilty party in that regard? Absolutely. absolutely. I agreed with him that we're all guilty. When I say we, the collective, we have test prep vendors, Gaplin, STC, past perfect, uh, you know, but uh, they even more so. Now, I would think in context of other test prep vendors, they're on the other side, had exam FX, training schools. I don't think they go deep enough. So They're too light. Some, somewhere between there, there's a happy meeting. I'm happy meeting. Yeah, let's go. We're all in it together, right? Well, yeah, I'm a, like I said, I'm kind of a kind of a nerdy guy. Do, 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 do. Well, now you guys got me curious about this Austrian economic stuff. I'm I'm going to have to. Ludwig van Mises, Human Action. That's the book That's for you. Sure. You can check it out. Okay. Yeah. What's the discount for uh, Test Geek? Guru 20. <laughs> yeah, Guru 20. Uh, oh, did I, I didn't know that come by in one of your oh, questions. Oh, did I miss it? Did somebody ask yeah. for the Guru? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, and they can, I don't think they, let me just get the banner back there for you. So it's Guru 20. And then this is where I think you can get, let me see if I can find it. There we go. That's where you can go get get the stuff, right? That's the video, video platform. Yeah, yeah so that's where you find all, 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 all his goodies. 20. All his goodies, all his goodies. Okay, so where are we at here? Boom, 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 boom. Congratulations. Yeah, no question marks, exclamation points. <laughs> uh, cost basis is just simply when you turn the uh, money into the investment. So I think you need to know that because, for example, in a variable annuity, I just worked at Question Cynthia, and it said a qualified annuity. I think that's in either the office hour or the live stream tonight. And qualified means you have a zero cost basis. So that means everything coming out is taxable. So things like that are impacted by your ability to understand cost basis. So I don't think it's a big deal. If you told me you missed the mark because of cost basis, I'd go, eh. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, it can be up there a couple of times on the test. Mm -hmm. yeah. What I tell people is it's, it's actually kind of a tax term. It's the amount you've already paid taxes on. Okay, there we go. I like that. So when you're making the investment... Assuming that I like that, that's I like that. The other thing I would say, Cynthia, is taxable. Uh, the other thing I would say, particularly in options, my God, all the test prep vendors go way in the weeds on tax consequences of options. They do, and and for most, for the most part, the cost basis of an option exercise is the break even. But you know, I certainly can. I certainly can. The fourth market test question. This could be on the SIE. Could be on the Series Seven. The fourth market is direct trading between institutions. They'll say the fourth market can best be characterized as, and you would say direct trading between institutions. Let me just put a link here, 4326, fourth market. And then a lot of institutional investors like to trade anonymously, you know, because, you know, if you know it's Fidelity, for example, you can, you know, front run on them or shadow their trades. So dark pools are simply where investors, typically institutional investors, can trade anonymously. So that's what the word dark pool means. The other one I would know, Kenya, I'm hoping to pronounce that correctly, is the third market. And the third market, well, there's the difference between fourth market and dark pools. So dark pools is just a subset of the fourth market. You know, th there are some institutional investors trading directly. They don't care if people know who they are. And they trade directly, for for example, on Instanet, the institutional network. But there are other institutional investors who like to trade anonymously. They still have to report their trades. And then I would know the third market can best be character characterized as listed securities traded over the counter. That would be the third market. Uh, any questions on the fourth market, Brian? Anything you want to add to that? Uh, series seven for the fourth market. You think uh, no? You don't think that's testable? No, oh yeah. Fourth market for Series 7 yeah. and 24, if anybody's up there. You don't think oh, SIE? That's a potential question on SIE? I, I don't know if they go quite to the fourth market okay. on the SIE. Okay. Yeah. And the dark All right, Henry. Five. Yeah. Wishing you good luck. That 10 is a slog, my friend, Henry. I'll be sending you good testing vibes. Yeah. My God, that thing is a slog. 
just in terms of length. And so uh, let's see if we can get it done this time for sure. You know where to find me if you need me. So yeah, I like you're using Kaplan. So anybody using Kaplan, one of the advantages of using Kaplan is uh, Kaplan does give me the uh, uh, permission to give, give you a free look on their content. And what that means is you can just send me the QID number, Henry, of your Series 10, any Kaplan question, any exam, the QID, and I can look it up and see what you're looking at. And then what I usually do is make a little video explication for you. I walk, you know, hi, this is Dean, and, you know, here's question whatever, and we talk about it. I can't believe it, Confidence, Rachel. I'm so with you. I think 10 points at least. What do you think confidence is worth? Yeah, Brian? No doubt. No doubt. I, 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 I don't know if I can quantify it, but it's, yeah. it, it's a game changer. It can be. I really believe it. I really believe it is. Love it. Well, I'm not as new agey as my brother and sister in law, but you know, they are in the law. Well, what's it called? The law of attraction. You know, <laughs> the, uh, the intention that you set Rachel, they'd love. I'm going to pass. And I did. And that's reminds me of my brother and sister. -in -law. Uh, I haven't heard a surprising amount. I usually uh, UITs 4603. One, maybe? Yeah, I think uh, I'm just going to say, Brian, what I usually see is to know it's a fixed portfolio of assets that have been professionally selected and it's passively managed. That's, right. That's usually what shows up. Uh, you got anything to add to that, Brian? I uh, and and it's redeemable, like a open redeemable. Yeah, as the bonds redeem, it's usually bonds. It could be anything, but it's... It's usually bonds, and as the bonds are mature, that gets passed through. So Price once a day, NAV, just like an open end. It's very similar to an open yeah. end, except it's passively managed. Yeah. And again, surprising amount of UIT questions. Be careful on debrief because, you know, uh, things can take on urban myths, and you don't want to be studying. Like, I would be uh, worried if somebody saw this in the replay and said, oh, my God, and they spent a lot of time on UIT, UITs that should be spent and invested elsewhere, yeah. like on – Nuni bonds or options or open and mutual funds or ETFs, you know, those are way more testable than UITs typically. So don't tell this person, you know, the Dean called them out and said, oh, you didn't see a bunch of questions on UITs, but, you know. Uh, I think very good, Billy. Very good. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, I would be surprised if you don't pass Friday. So, you know, I can, you know keep working. Keep working, finish strong, and I have every expectation next Tuesday you'll be on here like uh, Rachel is a victorious test taker. Yes. And then you can circle back and, you know, tell us what you saw. Yeah, you got to work. I don't know when work became a bad word. <laughs> you got to put in the work. You know, the, the payoff, Rachel put in the work, and now she got a P. That, that is, you can't, you can't pass these exams without putting in the work. And it, it's, uh, it hurts my heart when people don't understand that, that maybe they keep, were come from a background where they're able to cram the night before and, and pass exam, or maybe they're a good test taker. That one just won't work here. Those days are over. So you got to put in the work. You got to put in the work. Uh, by the way, as, a, as an accountability partner, I'm actually more uh, worried about that, your work and what you'll commit to in terms of activity level than I am about, you know, your scores, you know, like, how much reading are you going to do? How many questions are you going to get done today? Those kind of activities that are the work that you need to do to pass the exam. So, Well, three types of REITs, Jason. Um, there are REITs that, you know, buy a portfolio of operating real estate. That's one. There are REITs that buy mortgages. That's two. And then there's hybrid REITs where they do a combination of both of those. And you buy a REIT for the same reason you would buy a mutual fund, professional management, diversification, ease of ownership. It's just that you're not buying a diversified portfolio of securities. You're buying proportion ownership in a professional managed uh, real estate portfolio. I would also know that REITs and mutual funds must pass through at least 90% of their net investment income. And remember, REITs don't pass through losses as a partnership does. So there you go. Uh, what investors are best for each? Well, uh, you know, it depends. I think what I would say, it depends on total return. I'd go for the hybrid. If I was more interested in income than capital appreciation, I'd go for the mortgages. And if I'm interested in, uh, you know, uh, higher total return, but with less, with more risk, I'd go for the, the straight rate. Uh, you have anything on suitability? Usually a suitability, Jason, question is that REITs are a liquid way to own real estate as compared to a partnership. Whoop. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I hit the wrong one. All right. Woohoo, Rachel. 
Thanks for coming by and sharing your victory with us. So thank right. you so much. Another victorious test taker in the house. I'm going to have to learn how to like, uh, I think I can do this. I'm still learning these social media tricks. Uh, so, and thank you so much for your support. The channel is about to go over 2 million views backstage. It already has. And then we're coming up on 20,000 subscribers. And I think what I want to learn, learn how to do Rachel, both Rachel's is be able to like, uh, what do they call them? I don't know. It's not called a, a sticker where you can give people a sticker that passed their test. You know, on our Reddit communities, we give people rocket ships when they pass. So maybe we can come up with a way to distinguish people in the chats who are joining us who are victorious test takers. So if you are taking the seven, uh, here's an opportunity for you to confirm or what Brian and Dean have told you. Or, you know, who knows? Maybe she says these guys are all wet. You know? <laughs> hey, even that's good feedback. Yeah, I do. I, I like it. I like it. Uh, Kat, does Kaplan provide a chapters correlate to four, uh, the section four breakdown? Uh, no, but you could figure it out, John. I think I might have that uh, for the seven. I think I might. Um, my email is Dean the Series Seven Guru. Uh, send me an email, and I think I might have that. I'm not promising that, uh, but you can certainly figure it out. But I think I actually have that for the seven. If the seven is what you're you're taking. Okay, let's see where we at. Uh, AD Banker, I think, puts you at risk. So um, I think it's like exam FX. What do you think, Brian? I think you should definitely get a supplement. I, I think earlier you told us you have a supplement, so I'm okay with that. Uh, the Kaplan uh, editions are all great. I mean, they're always updating them, but the latest edition is always the best one to use. But, you know, do you need to buy a new edition if you have an old edition? I'm not so sure, but you should always be using the most current version of what's available. And Kaplan's pretty good, by the way. If you have an old edition that you paid for, that if you call them, they'll typically swap you out. You so. know what? To be honest with you, if it's seven, it's got to be after 2018, right? After the creation of the SIE. I don't we're know how old an edition. The seven, I think we're on the 11th edition. Are you? Okay. Couple of on the 11th edition, I think. It's got to be after 2018. Yeah. There you go. We did that one already. All right. I love it, Ben. Oh, Ben was, man, Ben killed the 63. Uh, ben was kind enough, like our friend Jerry, to give me permission to share his uh, his performance, which, man, Brian, I got to tell you, you know, Brian, I've been doing this a long time and, you know, uh, very rarely we get people who, man, they're on it. <laughs> and, uh, I think, Ben, what you missed, like two or three questions on your practice, we knew you were going to pass your 63. So wow. now the problem, Ben, is there our expectations have been set <laughs> for your stuff. And so... <laughs> Better make sure you do well on your seven as well. Uh, ben, I'll make you that same offer too. If you, uh, if you want to, if you're up to it, uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, queue that Q bank up again and we can do a seven together uh, and put it on the channel for others. Helpful. Uh, I did, I don't find the Kaplan video bank to be helpful at all. And usually go to YouTube instead. Well, thank you, Philip. Brian and I both say thank you very much. Uh, you know, and I agree with him. I really do. Well, Kaplan uh, wanted me to help on the videos. I go, why would I do that? I got my own videos, you know. Uh, you pass the SIE, struggling with municipals. So on 5317, I have uh, several lectures for that. I don't know if you've watched them already. Munis is important. I have the three, actually. I have uh, the content outline that I explicate. I have a underwriting muni bond lecture, which is very important, components of the spread and uh, participants in a underwriting. And then I have a, uh, a regular muni bond lecture. So I have three lectures on videos on uh, muni bonds as well as a lot of questions. And then options, my God, I got too much. I have you know hundreds of videos on options. I've got the three in the playlist that you should definitely do that. I'll put those there. Uh, the three videos in the front are the most important. And uh, Philip, you might want to consider joining us Thursday. Uh, I am doing a advanced option class at 4.30 Las Vegas time. And that's uh, $60. And you're welcome to join us. Uh, that comes with uh, free office hours and uh, free replay where if we do it again, when we do the class again, you can repeat it for free. So uh, I'll link to that as well. Yeah, I think, you know, like I say, the additions, you know, I joke, but if uh, Kaplan said we, you know, Bill James and Chuck, these are the guys who write books for Kaplan. And if they said that was their best edition, then we could get rid of them. So the minute they finish an edition, they're starting on the next one. It's one of my pet peeves, Ryan, because sometimes a new edition is not necessary. Right. And sometimes they're introducing, this goes back to Brian's uh, rant about Q banks. And I think it's also books. They, they 
put stuff in there that doesn't need to be there. And the book gets bigger and bigger and bigger, even though the exam has not changed. And when I call them out on, they go, they, well, Dean, it's better to have too much than not enough. I kind of get it. But boy, when you get that book, like the 65 book, Brian, is literally, it's bigger than the seven. 600 book. pages. It's crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, I'm I, my only I think Kaplan and Test Geek are a better combination than Kaplan and Achievable, of course, because, you know, Brian's my brother from another mother. But the other reason is that my only gripe about Achievable, I'm glad you got Kaplan, is pay attention to the correlation of a Kaplan score. You know, every once in a while, adultly, somebody has an Achievable score that does not correlate to the actual exam. So that's my only gripe about Achievable is the correlation of their practice test to the actual test. But if you're using it for you know, just to learn more stuff. Brandon writes great prose. He's, you know, writes good stuff. Uh, you know, yeah, the questions are my, are my problem with that. So I don't have a problem with it as an SIE, a standalone, because you could even just use my channel as a standalone for the SIE. But on a seven, I would highly recommend you if you have achievable use supplement. There you go. Uh, there are not a lot of questions on margin. There isn't. There's three or four. So don't overdose on margin is what we always tell people. Uh, I will link to my margin lecture. It is sufficient to pass the test. And the lecture is called Don't Overdose on Margin. That is what the lecture is called. Whoop. If you're a man who practices a kick. Yeah, I think, yeah. Is that Bruce Lee, I think, right? Yeah. I think that comes from Bruce Lee. Not, not only do I know Austrian economics, I know Bruce Lee, too. I'm a true Renaissance man. Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Ben, I'll leave it up to you to track me down after you get your work done because, you know, I have high expectations. <laughs> all right. So it's time for our drawing. Let me uh, get this uh, done here. Broadcast. June 6th. It looks like I got the wrong date on this thing. I think it'll still work. Um Let's say, call it get, get the P with an explanation. I like it. I like it. Uh, can you guys see that? Now I got to go find it, Brian. So give me a minute here. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So, do, do, do. Get the P. Oh my God, that's not. Hello. Bad. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Hold on. Stop sharing. Okay, I need to get rid of this. I appreciate your patience. Uh, let me find. Try that again. So, boom. I'll put this over here. Choose the broadcast. Try that again. Yeah, uh, boom. Comments, share the screen. Okay, I think I am. Uh, I think I got it this time. All right, so uh, put get the P if you're interested in the drawing in the chat, and we'll start collecting those entries. And uh, the drawing today are, is for our advanced options class. There's an entry. It's got to be exactly as the chat reads. Again, you can assign the uh, the class to some friend in the office. Uh, you can do with it what you want to do with it. You know, if I'm in a good mood, I might even let you assign it. It's got to be Oscar. Get to be with an explanation part. It's got to be exactly as it reads. And that, again, will be Thursday, 4.30 p.m. And you to claim it, you have to send me an email with an hour saying, Dean, I'm the winner. I think Vassal was our winner last uh, thing. And by the way, if you, if you win, I'm, I'm not promising because, again, I don't want to have a liability. It's for the advanced options class. But in Vassal's case, he told me, Dean, I'm testing tomorrow. That will do me no good. Give it to someone else. I said, well, tell you what, in your case, I'll let you use it at a future date. All right. So is that it? Has everybody got their comment in? Drum roll, okay, here you go. go.
Kavita, you are the winner. So send me an email, Dean the Series 7 Guru at gmail.com, and I will send you your Zoom invite to the Thursday Advanced Options class. For the rest of you, it's almost booked out. So if you go to register for that class and it doesn't show up, that means it's cap. I cap it at 10, and that means it's cap. But uh, if you're still interested, send me an email and I'll over I'll override the cap and let you into that if you choose to uh, join us. Okay, so uh, anything else for yeah. tonight? And I'm just checking chat. All right. Well, remember, inch by inch, your exam is a cinch. Yard by yard, your exam is hard. And as Brian always says, just like Rachel, stay with what you know. You take the test. Don't let the test take you. Have some confidence. I love it. Love it. See you next Tuesday. You know where to find us if you need us before then. Bye-bye. <laughs>